Welcome to our project based in Rio de Janeiro. We had the opportunity to travel to this fantastic city with our university, and we want to show you through our first-hand experience the relationship of religious and cultural activities within public spaces and how they contribute to the place identity of Rio de Janeiro. We will be showing you various social spaces we visited in Rio and a small village called Parachi, a small historic town 260 kilometers away from Rio, and how each space is used by the locals. Rio de Janeiro was first ruled by Portuguese invaders from 1565 but gained independence in 1822. During the colonisation, one of the main elements that the Portuguese introduced was mandatory Catholicism in order to civilise the local native people. Now, Catholicism is Brazil's national religion and Brazil has the largest number of Catholics in the world. 88.9% of the population in Rio de Janeiro is Christian, and of that, 64.8% of these are Roman Catholic. However, there has been a decline in believers in recent years. This introduction of the Catholic faith can be seen in the early city planning of Portuguese settlements in Rio, like Centro and Gamboa. The colonialism process involved the Portuguese demolishing any indigenous places, enslaving natives, and building churches with parish communities surrounding them. Before colonization, public urban space organizations as we know it did not exist. Natives didn't even have cities, and the process of imposing colonial urban planning has meant a large part of the indigenous history and architecture has been lost. But in Rio, public space as we know it is a product of when the Portuguese came. This shows how the Catholic religion was part of the building blocks of Brazilian society. As part of the Portuguese calling Brazil their new home, slaves were transported to Rio. The Portuguese played an important role in the slave trade in the colonial period of Atlantic slave trading, with an estimated 4.9 million slaves from Africa being brought to Brazil during the period from 1501 to 1866. Slave labour was the driving force behind the growth of the sugar economy in Brazil, and sugar was the primary export of the colony from 1600 to 1650. Gold and diamond deposits were discovered in Brazil in 1690, which sparked an increase in the importation of African slaves to power this newly profitable mining. Rio was the largest slave port in America, and it received more African slaves than any other country. As a result, the slaves brought their own customs to Brazil, and because of this, today, Brazil possesses a highly rich spiritual society formed from the repression of African faiths and the merging of Catholic customs with the religious traditions of African slaves and the indigenous people. Religions like Cadomblé and Umbanda emerged but were condemned for being pagan or satanic, and the practice of dance and music was key to the summoning of their many gods. Cadomblé and the Orishas served as an ever-present reminder that African slaves were brought to Brazil. Though their lives are very different in Brazil, their culture has been preserved at least to some degree. For example, on February the 2nd, you can see Cadomblé festivities in the streets of Rio that celebrate the sea goddess, and Samba is a byproduct of these rituals. Yeah, that's right. Religion forms a very important part of the identity of any nation and its culture. The complexity of religion in Brazil only testified once again to its death as a country. After the Brazilian independence, the first constitution introduced freedom of religion in 1824. But, due to years of systematic oppression of other religions, Roman Catholicism still remains as Brazil's official religion. The practice of Christianity can still be seen in people singing in churches, their doors left wide open for the music to flow out into the streets. Religious decorations of palms on Easter Sunday and shrines above shops are everywhere. It can be more visible too through the occupation of public space. When we were in a market in Ipanema, we witnessed a Christian group celebrating the faith and encouraging strangers to jump through a doorway to receive a heart balloon and kisses on their cheeks. A symbol that embracing Christianity brings love, happiness and a welcoming community. In communities like Hilltop Favelas, which are originally black working class slave neighborhoods, the overarching umbrella of Christianity is seen through a large quantity small churches and shrines. Tandomlin temples do exist, but they are a minority, and they are not architecturally symbolic or imposing in comparison to churches. The mixture of African and indigenous religions that survived through slavery and Catholicism, like Andomle, has created some of the most interesting and diverse cultural aspects that has bled into Brazilian society through dance, food and culture. When you head towards the favela of Providencia, the winding streets and colourful stairs lead you to the Church of Our Lady Pena, with a small square in front of it. This church acts as a landmark, along with the Chapel of Providencia. Both religious buildings are at one of the highest points within the neighbourhood and can be spotted through the winding streets. 
These pure white buildings now compete with colourful murals, rustic brick and concrete houses, and the moon icon of Casa Amarela, a house owned by a local activist photographer. <laughs> Churches provide rare open public spaces for the community within the tightly packed favelas. Standing in the square, you witness how during the day, on Good Friday, it is a safe haven for children to play football on the tiled floor and learn to dance under the shade of the palm trees. These squares are also used for religious festivities organised by the church's congregations and Catomble followers. Religious events raise money or provide food to help the needy within such communities, and these places help to bring cross-sections of community together. Especially in favelas, these community efforts are combined with efforts from both Afro-Brazilian religions and Christians, and they work together to aid the communities. On Good Friday, we witnessed this religious culture when we walked through a vibrant market selling fish, as meat is not permitted to be consumed on this religious day. We ate fish at a local bar within the favela, respecting this practice. So what was it like in Parachi, Alberto? Well, at night these religious squares came alive with samba concerts. This culture of parties within church squares can be seen in Parachi. Samba is regularly performed within these places, and the music acts as a means to congregate people. During these parties, tourists and locals mix and drink caipirinhas from small market stalls or informal drink trolleys and dance, play music and socialise. It is apparent that despite the church being the most prominent building surrounding the square, and that religious monuments sit within the hardscape square, the place does not have a wholly Catholic religious identity. Instead, the sensory experience of samba music and dance acts as a glue that brings people together, a concept that can be seen in Afro-Brazilian religions of Candomble. In Candomble, people make the temple rather than the building. Within the contemporary world of Rio, you can observe that even at the largest, most prominent icon of the city, on Easter Sunday, the public space is filled with photo-taking tourists rather than prayer. Christ the Redeemer watches over the city, and the statue is seen everywhere. Beneath the statue, there is a small chapel and a public square, but to most cariocas and tourists that visit the Christ, the statue is treated more as a statue of liberty rather than as a religious symbol and the square is a viewing platform rather than a place of religious festivity. Yeah, that's right. During our time in Rio, our idea of its identity shifted from the Christ to our most memorable day-to-day -day experiences of the city. The Christ's Statue of Liberty image can also be an analogy of the shift in the Carioca psyche and tourist impression of Rio. Rio contains countless vibrant places, with and without religious history or icons, and that enables the rich culture of music and samba, a more lasting memory, I think. When we asked cariocas and tourists alike what represented Rio to them, the main answer was the city's spirit, not Christ. Places like the beach, dancing samba in the square, drinking beer on the street corner. The culture of occupying space for celebration and leisure is a culture unique to Rio in comparison to the rest of the Brazil. So, Religious and Christianity related parties are a key part of Rio society and are reasons for public space occupation. But in terms of everyday life, Samba arguably provides a stronger place identity and is part of a larger carioca culture of occupying free public space. When you visit Pedro do Sal on a Monday night, an established Samba evening takes place. You can see and experience the two essence of the carioca spirit. Pedro do Sal was originally where the sea met the land, and slaves first set foot in Rio. Now, Pedro do Sal is a square with a large rock that protrudes from the ground where ships once docked. It is a small square, with a rock providing natural amphitheatre and colourful murals of black activists watching the crowds listening and singing to samba. Its historical significance is held with pride by the locals that live on the hill above the rocks. You can feel that pride of the black history of Rio is celebrated when you sit and experience the gathering firsthand. You may notice that the square has a distinct lack of Christian architecture surrounding a public space. Within such a key historical place of Rio, this is almost symbolic of how African slaves that built Rio arrived there with their own customs and practices. The mixture of African religions that survived throughout slavery and Catholicism, Candomble, has created some of the most interesting and diverse cultural aspects like Samba. Samba was originally a religious Afro-Brazilian dance performed by slaves that were repressed by colonial Portuguese Catholics. However, now it is regularly performed within these religious and non-religious spaces. Samba is now claimed by all Brazilians, and this is partly due to Samba losing its original African-based roots through the systematic shaming of black culture. Through Samba being recorded and played on, on radio during the 20th century, it has now become a Brazilian practice embraced by all races and classes. A key symbol of this is seen in the city of Samba, music hall, in Santo Cristo. 
This is a prime example of Samba being accommodated within the urban planning of contemporary area. Candomble and the Orishas serve as an ever-present reminder that African slaves were brought to Brazil. Though their lives were different in Brazil, their culture has been preserved at least to some degree. Another example of a public space with a strong place identity was Plaza Mawa, near Santa Cristo. It was a 15-minute walk from Pedro de Sala. However, the place identity is extremely different. Yes, it is. The plaza is a huge new public square where once an elevated highway stood. At day, local people from the hills come and sell food in the market within the square, and during the night the square is left to perform whatever use is required of it. When we visited, we saw people dancing and skateboarding, similar to favela squares in Providencia. In essence, many of the components are similar to other squares that we visited. There's lush green infrastructure, hardscaping, places to dance and congregate, However, the square also lacks any religious icons and is flanked by museums for modern art, Calatrava's Museum of Tomorrow and commercial offices, symbolising how religious place identity is diminishing as a new wave of municipal governors, city planners, urban designers and architects embrace consumerism and the advancement of technology. It's almost like a new religion. To conclude, I think we came to Rio with many preconceptions. Yeah, I assumed that being almost a 90% Christian country that the religion would be everywhere. But maybe we just saw it in churches and not really on the streets. There's more of a complex relationship with the Carioca culture and religion than on the surface. It's not really omnipresent and that really surprised me. Also, in terms of the role religion plays in society, in places like Santo Cristo and Porto Maravilla, it is now less about praying and more about the role of religious organisations and how they operate within communities. What happens around churches and how they use public space in relation to religion is more focused on education, social events and events for kids. So both Afro-Brazilian and Portuguese Catholic religious practices have lost their significance due to either shame or lack of relevance. Religious holidays are a reason to party and ritualistic dancing is adopted by everyone. But from this, activities such as samba are now perceived as Brazilian. Despite this loss of culture, with the rise of radio, samba music dissipated social antagonism and helped unify all sectors of Brazilian society. So what is the true place identity of public squares in Rio? We believe it is the activity within places regardless of the Catholic religious iconography that once was imposed by colonists. Granted, religious activity within communities and festivities are still key to the vibrancy of Rio, but in our opinion, through our experience and conversations with Cariocas, the day-to-day -day activities truly contribute to Rio's identity. The places are created through a different kind of occupation in comparison to the past. The Cariocas occupation of public space produces a rich sensory experience through music, dance, conversation, and the smell of food vendors surrounding the space. This public activity borrows from the rich and various cultures, religions, and ethnicities within Rio today.